results are in. There's been a, a multitude of studies across the world from different countries, and they've come in, and basically the results are we've overestimated the mortality rate of the COVID by about 30 to 50 times. Could be up to that much. Um, but that's not how Science Magazine, of course, frames the story. They frame it very differently. They're trying to impugn the credibility of the researchers who did these studies, saying, oh, these guys are like MAGA people, they're Trump people who want to open it up, they want to end the lockdown anyways, they just care about their stonks and their money and their 401ks, they don't care about people's lives are at risk. Some observers warn the coronavirus march through the population has only just begun. Oh, so you got to fear more. And that even if the antibody results can be believed, they don't justify easing the controls. No, certainly not. No, no, no. We should have more controls of anything. No, we need Big Brother to come in here and step on everybody's tread on me, please, Daddy. Tread on me harder. <laughs> What's wrong with these people? Come on. This is Only Real Cloud. I make uh, daily videos about news, politics, culture, and dank memes. And of course, now it's just mostly about the coronavirus because we're all in the plague, we're all in the lockdown, and that's what uh, there is to talk about, I suppose. I've been looking forward to hearing about these antibody surveys that have been coming out to figure out how many people have actually got the virus that we haven't got through the direct testing. Uh, ben Shapiro has been talking about this. Can we do random sampling of the population? just to figure out, do they have the antibodies? Have they been infected already with the coronavirus? And then we can get a, an estimate of how many people actually have it in the general population who we haven't tested because we can't actually get all the tests out to everybody all at once. And so the results are in. There's been a, a multitude of studies across the world from different countries, and they've come in, and basically the results are we've overestimated the mortality rate of the COVID by about... 30 to 50 times could be up to that much. Um, but that's not how Science Magazine, of course, frames the story. They frame it very differently. Here, here they have antibody surveys suggesting vast undercount of coronavirus infections may be unreliable. Oh, so they're trying to say that it's unreliable. Well, how come that is the case? What are they having to say about that? Surveying large swaths of the public for antibodies of the, to the new coronavirus promises to show how widespread undiagnosed infections are, how deadly the virus really is, and whether enough of the population has become immune for social distancing measures to be eased. But the first batch of results have generated more controversy than clarity. The survey results from Germany, the Netherlands, and several locations in the United States find that anywhere from 2% to 30% of certain populations have already been infected with the virus. The numbers imply that confirmed COVID-19 cases are even smaller fraction than the true numbers of people infected than many have estimated and that the vast majority of infections are mild. But many scientists question the accuracy of the antibody tests and complain that several of the research groups announcing their findings in the press rather than in preprints of publishing papers where their data could be scrutinized. Oh, so there's, there must be hiding something, right? Critics are also wary because some of the researchers are also on record advocating for an early end to lockdowns and other control measures and, the, and claim the new prevalence figures support that call. Oh, so they're trying to criticize the, they're trying to impugn the credibility of the researchers who did these studies saying, oh, these guys are like MAGA people, they're Trump people who want to open it up, they want to end the lockdown anyways, they just care about their stonks and their money in their 401ks. They don't care about people's lives or at risk. They just care about their money. That's the, that's the framing that they're trying to get here. And all of these scientists are criticizing these studies as unreliable. Oh no, so maybe that really good news, that really good news that they kind of just skipped over here. What is, what's the main thing that you would take from this? The mortality rate is 50 times less than we thought it would be. That's the real story that this thing is way less dangerous than we initially thought, which is excellent news. That's great. And that could really, that's the thing. Hey, if it's not so dangerous, maybe we shouldn't be reacting so, uh, so much. We shouldn't be reacting like as if it were dangerous with a mortality rate of 6%. It's more like 0.1 or 0.2, maybe 0.3. Uh, so it's a little bit worse than the flu, three times worse than the flu which is still pretty serious, even twice as bad as the flu is serious. 
but it's not it's not 60 times worse than the flu it's not six percent mortality rate wiping out people across the planet that's not actually what's going on here but of course science magazine for some reason just skips over that good news story and goes on to how unreliable it actually is. Oh, we can't trust this. We've got to keep the lockdowns. Got to keep the doom and gloom. Got to keep the fear going. For some reason, hmm. Some observers warn the coronavirus march through the population has only just begun. Oh, so you got to fear more, and that even if the antibody results can be believed, they don't justify easing the controls. No, certainly not. No, no, no. We should have more controls of anything. Uh, we need Big Brother to come in here and step on everybody's tread on me, please, Daddy. Tread on me harder. <laughs> What's wrong with these people? Come on. Oh, you would have hoped for 45% or even 60% positive, says Mark Perkins. Oh, a diagnostic expert. That sounds like he's a scientist at the World Health Organization. Oh, no, they're communists, aren't they? And <laughs> they've been totally co-opted by the Chinese, the, the Chinese health organization at this point. So I'm not so sure uh, if we can even believe this guy. And what does that even mean? We hope for 45 or even 60, but so 30%. Whoa, that's actually really big. He says, that would mean that there is a lot of silent transmission and a lot of immunity in the population. Well, that would be good too, right? It now looks like, sadly, that's not true. Even the high numbers are relatively small. Oh, no, so it's bad. you got to keep it locked down for some reason. I feel like the WHO the WHO here is trying to buy time for China so that China can get into position, they can control their situation, and they can get into position in the geopolitics of the world and the global economy so that when everything comes back to life, China is still in a strong position and they must be putting pressure on the World Health Organization to keep everybody else locked down. That's what I think. That's what I'm reading into this. Even the high numbers are relatively small. 45% isn't that much bigger than 60% or than 30%. 45% isn't that much higher than 30%. 30% is pretty high. This is really good news, but they just skim over that. Okay, so we've got one diagnostic expert who maybe is a scientist, but they work for the WHO, so I feel like they might be compromised. Who else do they have criticizing? Other scientists criticizing here. The many different academic and commercial tests for coronavirus antibodies are still being refined and validated. They can show whether someone's immune system has encountered the virus, but because no one knows what the level of antibodies, if any, confers protection against the new virus, the test can't tell whether a person is immune to a freezer infection, so you still have to fear, and no one knows how long such an immunity could last. Even if you were immune, it's probably not going to last long, so still, be scared. Stay in your house. we got to keep locked up. More bands, more bands. That's what they're calling for. That's what they're saying here. A German antibody survey was the first out of the gate several weeks ago. Oh, so this is even several weeks old, and now they're reporting on it, only to say that it's unreliable? Great. Where were you several weeks ago? At a press conference, at a press conference on April 9th, virologist Hendrik Strik from the University of Bonn announced preliminary results from a town of about 12,500 in Heisenberg, in Heinsberg, a region in Germany that had been hit hard by the COVID-19. He told reporters his team had found antibodies to the virus in 14% of the 500 people tested. Wow, 14%, that's pretty high. By comparing that number from the recorded deaths in the town, the study suggested that the virus kills only 0.37% of people infected. The seasonal influenza is 0.1. So that's uh, three or four times worse than the seasonal flu. Still serious, still a big problem, but not anywhere near as 6%, which is what, you know, or 3% is what they've been saying. The team concluded for a two-page summary that 50% of the population can no longer be infected with the sars cov so here they go and talk about herd immunity again. Well, this isn't really that relevant. We're not really worried about the herd immunity. I mean, yeah, sure, maybe, that's a thing. But what we're really worried about here is what's the actual mortality rate? And if we have 50 times more people who are actually infected than we thought there were, then that means that based on the people that actually have it, if we did an estimation of how many people probably actually got it, a lot more than we thought, a lot more than the confirmed numbers, versus how many people actually died from it, the mortality rate is very, very low. Still higher than the flu, but still very much lower than the initial results, or the initial predictions here. So they recommended uh, in Germany that the politicians start to lift some of the region's restrictions. Streak had argued even before the study that the virus is less serious than feared, and that the effects of a long shutdown might just be bad. Uh, the, the effects of a long shutdown may be as, just as bad, if not worse, than the damage the virus could do. Oh, so he's 
he's biased, of course. He already didn't want the shutdown, so we can't trust him, even though he's an actual scientist. Still haven't heard any actual scientists who aren't from the WHO uh, provide any criticism here. Oh, so they're saying, oh, you know, the tests could have been, there could have been some false positives in the test, and so that's maybe not as uh, as reliable as we thought. So that, that might be uh, legitimate there. Okay, so they had some false positives, and that's going to change the number. But still, uh, it sounds like it's still a lot more than we thought, and still the mortality is a lot lower than 3% or 6%. Um, so here's a California study that showed very similar things. Um, about 1% or 1.5%, 2% or 4% of the county's residents had likely been infected in the Santa Clara County. That suggests, they say, that the real number of infections was as much as 80,000, which is more than 50 times as many as viral gene tests had confirmed. The viral gene test being the direct testing where you actually know, okay, this person currently has this virus, we found it in their system, they're currently infected, rather than the antibodies which this body produces uh, to fight the virus, and then there's a trace after the fact. Once the virus is out of the system, the antibodies still linger and could provide some immunity. But maybe not. That's not really the point. The point is, what's the real mortality rate? So it's more than uh, 50 times as many, and that implies a low fatality rate. Yes, very important. A reason to consider whether strict lockdowns are worthwhile. Very much argue, this is what they argue um, in, the, in the study uh, from Stanford. On the day, the preprint posted, co-author Andrew Bogan, a venture capitalist with a molecular biology PhD. Okay, so he actually has a PhD. Uh, fair enough, though he's not actually a working scientist. Um, all right, so I guess he's a scientist. If policymakers were aware from the outset that COVID-19 death toll would be closer to that of the seasonal flu, would they have risked tens of millions of jobs and livelihoods? He did not disclose his role in the study. Well, I don't know if he had a study. Maybe he gave them some money. But he's certainly saying, okay, maybe we shouldn't have done this lockdown at all if, uh, if we knew then what we know now. And certainly if we know now that the mortality rate is much, much lower than we initially thought, much closer to the seasonal flu, Maybe it's time to end the lockdown. Maybe it's time to restart the global economy. That doesn't mean that we just go right back to normal. I think we should keep some social distancing in place. Maybe we shouldn't have giant groups of people. Maybe we should still have, uh, you know, some precautions. Maybe we should still be wearing some masks and gloves or washing our hands extra. Uh, but I think for the large part, I think we should start seriously working on getting our economy unlocked and back to working so that the damage to the economy isn't so dramatic and we don't go into a depression for the next 10 years. Because that's very serious. And you know what? A lot of people will actually die in that for all sorts of reasons. And if, if only one death is too many from the COVID, then surely only one death is too many from, from the economic impacts. Suicides, people lose their job. There's all sorts of bad things. Crime increases if everybody's poor and people... People could get hurt. People could lose their lives. And that's one too many lives lost as well because of the government-imposed shutdowns. Yet Twitter threads and blog posts outlined a, litany, a litany of apparent problems with the Santa Clara study. Oh, okay, so the scientists of Twitter and the scientists of the blogosphere, okay, very reliable scientists there. They're, uh, they're making all sorts of criticism. Okay, well, they can do their criticism. What are they saying? Recruited through Facebook, likely attracted people with COVID-19-like symptoms who wanted to be tested, boosting the apparent positive rate. Because the absolute numbers of positive tests were so small, false positives may have been nearly as common as real infections. The study also had relatively few participants from low-income and minority populations, meaning that statistical adjustments from researchers were racist. <laughs> I mean, they could be way off because... They weren't considering the intersectionality of the virus. Oh, yes, I'm sure that's, a, that's legitimate. I think the authors of the paper owe us all an apology, wrote Columbia, Columbia University statistician and political scientist. Wait a second. Political scientist? That's not a real scientist. Andrew Gelman in the online commentary. The numbers were essentially the product of a statistical error. Oh, okay, sure. Very generous of you. Bhattacharya, even, even though this is like a replication of multiple other studies from across the world that are showing very similar results, that's how science works. You do one, 
you do another, and if you keep being able to replicate, uh, reproduce the results of your studies, then uh, that's going to be mounting evidence to show that this is probably what the reality is. Okay, but ignore all of that. That is a fair argument with, uh, if you recruit through Facebook, maybe people who have the symptoms are, are wanting to be tested, but I don't know if that's really going to throw the numbers so, so far, because it's like, well, but they could have had the common flu, they could have had the regular influenza, and, and, but no, they had the actual COVID influenza. So that, I don't think, is, is so significant, because I think that's really relevant, is people who had mild symptoms that didn't need to be hospitalized, did they all? Was that the COVID? Did, did I get the COVID? And did I get the COOF back in January or February? I mean, I feel like I, I might have. I feel like I probably did, to be honest. I feel like if I went and took the test now, I'd probably have the, the antibodies in my system. Maybe it was just a regular seasonal flu back then, but I think this doesn't matter. If you have symptoms then and you want to get tested, then that really what we're testing. Is this the regular cold? Or are you just feeling a bit under the weather? Was it the influenza, the seasonal one? Or is this the COVID? Is this the COOF? So, yeah, um, I, don't, I don't think that's actually super valid criticism, and it's coming from Twitter threads and blog posts anyway. So, yeah, great work, Science Mag here, undermining this uh, good news story for whatever reason. Are you getting money from the Ch Chinese? That's, is that what it is? Is Science Magazine getting money? Are you failing, you old traditional media? Are you getting money from the Chinese government to, to keep downplaying this, the, all the good news? That, hey, maybe we should shut down our economy and we can all boom back to health even though China probably can't because they probably have a way more serious situation with way higher rates of infection that they haven't told anybody about. Maybe that's what it's about. Maybe they're trying to stall everybody else in the world who probably doesn't need to be locked down. You know, maybe places like New York certainly should not go right back to normal because they've got a serious situation there. But for the rest of the world, for the most places, probably can go back to some kind of normalcy. Hmm. But no, then that might hurt China. That might... China might lose their position of power, or their position of challenging for the dominant state, the dominant global power. That might undermine their their ambitions in that regard. So no, we can't let that. We got to keep everybody equally locked down, collectively locked down. We're all in this together, people. Remember, we're not all sovereign nations making our own decision. No, no, no. We got to listen to the WHO. Listen to the WHO. They totally didn't say the opposite thing back then. Anyways. <sighs> Please consider subscribing if you like the content. Leave a like or a comment. I'll probably reply. Hit that notification bell and the all button if you want to get it. Otherwise, uh, YouTube's probably suppressing it. Maybe I'm not big enough for them to notice or care yet. But uh, that'd be kind of uh, be kind of flattering if they were suppressing me.